What's up guys, so I'm guys here for another video. As usual, I'm here with my good friend Ty. Guys, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, like, comment. If you've already been subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. Today we're gonna be continuing on a segment that we've been doing, which is like half side control, half back attacks. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically what we're doing is starting our attacks from the side control and looking for the back. So without further ado, I'll stop talking and let's get into it. So basically, uh, right here. we're in side control and we're looking to attack the back. The way that I like to attack the back, I've gone over this in the previous two videos, so I'll rehash very quickly, is basically I'm in a traditional side control where one hand is controlling his head, the other hand is underneath his elbow. I like this hand to be not too deep, like over here, I just wanna pry just at the edge of the elbow here. And what I'm gonna do is pressure into tie and kind of switch to my left hip just a little bit to get optimal shoulder pressure. And what this does is it creates a reaction where he tries to turn into me. When he does, I like to pull this elbow to me, okay? As soon as I pull this elbow to me, I wanna to start to circle. I'm going slow for the sake of demonstration, but I would have already anticipated the turn and I would have already been circling. So what I'm trying to do is keep my chest over his arm, bring my elbow over his belt, and start to turn. Guys, my chest is pushing Ty this way, and I scissor my legs, and I turn. Notice that my hip never falls to the ground. I don't do this. Why? I wanna keep forward pressure. Once I get to here, I can go to my knees, and I gotta keep my chest over his shoulder. Okay, so let's do the other side. So we're here. I get his elbow, I push into him, he pushes back, I pull, and I'm already circling quickly, okay? Hip is off the ground, scissor the legs, and keep myself low, chin over his shoulder so that I know I'm low, keeping a nice tight seatbelt grip. In our last video, we went over a bunch of different chokes where I can start attacking a bow and arrow, I can pin his wrist, I can start to go for the arm triangle, I can start to go for Ezekiel's. <clears throat> so if you're more of a choking guy, I'll leave that video in the link in the description. Today we're gonna to be looking at arm locks because from this position, there's a lot of good different arm attacks that you can do, right? The first being a very simple Kimura. So when I'm here, I can easily switch and trap his wrist. If I wanna trap his wrist prior with this hand, just to make sure I have it, and then circle over and switch grips, by all means, you can do that. I'm not gonna go into the debate on whether I like to use a monkey paw or interlace my thumb on this grip. I think that's personal preference. But I like doing the Kimura from this position because it's gonna give me a myriad of options, right? I don't have to go for the traditional Kimura. So I'm in this position where it's like a seatbelt slash Kimura. You can even come here from the seatbelt and get the Kimura grip. There's so many different ways. You can trap, come over, and come here, right? You can trap, get the key lock grip here. If you want, you can be here, kind of threatening the choke, maybe trying to mess with his lapels, and then get his arm, okay? There's so many different ways but you just want to isolate his wrist. So assuming I'm here and here, I get this Kimura grip, and now I'm going to go over his head. Okay, our first traditional attack from here is, is very simple. We can place our leg over his head, keep our chest glued to his elbow. If he makes a grip, okay, which he's definitely going to do, I like to keep my chest glued to his elbow so that my body becomes one solid unit, and then I like to use my body to lift. A lot of people have their chest off of the elbow and they're in this position upright and I'm trying to lift. But let's look at the anatomical approach here. I'm almost curling his arm if my chest isn't there. Versus if I'm here, I'm using my entire body to lift him. And that's such a subtle detail that not a lot of people mention. It's so important because I see people when they're rolling just grip up, they're here, and the guy's like, I can't pry anything, it's really hard. But if you just get tight and you start to shake, 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 really aggressively using your body, it makes such a difference. And that's the second part of this. When you approach this, you don't wanna just pull and let go and pull and let go. You wanna shake, 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 extremely aggressively using your body and arms simultaneously. So I'm here, I'm nice and tight, and I wanna shake, shake, shake. Then look, I can give his wrist a little turn, bring his thumb behind his head, and start to turn my body to get the Kimura grip, or to get the Kimura break. Okay, use your body to finish, right? So I turn my body, notice my legs. There's other ways to finish this Kimura grip, right? I can sit back into here and start to finish this way. There's so many different ways to finish the key lock and that's not what this video is about. The video is about understanding the different approaches to attacking submissions from this amazing position where it's like half side, 
pack back because we can take the back. So again, we can switch to the Kimura grip. We can go over our opponent's head, step, shake, 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 and attack here. Now, personally, I don't attack a lot of Kimuras. I'm smaller than most of the people that I'm training with. So when I isolate the arm and my elbow goes over his head, I do like to step into this position. I think it's safer. But what I like to do is to attack the arm lock with the Kimura grip. So I'll bring my leg here, heavy over his head. I'll fall to the side and I'll bring my leg over. I like to bring my leg over. And this is important because it allows me to follow up with back attacks. Some people will finish this arm lock from here. The power in the arm lock is equivalent. So you can finish the arm lock from here for sure, right? You can pull his elbow out and get the arm bar. But the benefit of having this leg over is look at this guys. Let's say Ty's trying to get up. If he gets up, I just circle, start to attack his back, and look, I can switch back into bow and arrows. You gotta know how to chain your submissions and your attacks. So sometimes if I'm unsuccessful, you know, maybe trying to take the back or getting the submission here, I'm switching over here, I'm attacking, I bring my leg here, I fall, I bring my leg over, he tries to get up because he's scrambling. Now I follow up. And now I have his back. I always like to go right back into the bow and arrow, but that's just me. But this is how we start to chain our attack. So another attack from here is you can start to go for wrist locks, right? If I'm in this position, like a traditional arm bar, I can fall back. If he starts to grip, a lot of people make the mistake of gripping their own wrist. I always come underneath, come at the knuckles, and I pull his wrist to me. So keep your grip. So he's gripped like this. I'm faking that I'm trying to break. I quickly switch my hand to his knuckles, circle up here, and I just pull his wrist in. If there's any exposure on the top of these knuckles, I'll always try the wrist lock, right? Even if I just take the approach from here, I can start to get the wrist lock. So that's a gimmicky wrist lock, but I like to do it. From this position, right? I always like to try to break the grip with my leg, okay? Maybe I can't break the grip with my leg. I pull my shin to me, throw it over his head, and then look, my left hand comes underneath his arm, grabs my shin, and now I have a triangle. And from the triangle, I have different submissions. So guys, the purpose of this video is not to show you specific submissions, but rather to give you an eye opener onto different things that you can do from this position. So more than anything, it's not really a technical video, it's just a conceptual video to show you this amazing position and how much you can do from it. You can literally go for arm bars, Kimuras, shoulder locks, different Kimura variations, multiple Kimura variations, multiple arm bar variations, wrist locks, triangles. I mean, it's literally endless. And unless you understand what's best for your personal game and what you are going to chain, you're going to be hindering yourself. Because if you go 100% for one submission without the other ones in mind, you might just overly exert yourself and never finish anything. Whereas if you understand, hey, I have this option and this option and this option, so I'm going to go... 60, 70%, if I feel I can get it, then I'll explode. If I don't, switch to the next, switch to the next, switch to the next. Marinate your opponent until you can get a good, clean submission finish. That's the way I like to roll. It's really fun to do also. And once you get onto a good submission chain, you'll find that offense is really the most important thing in jiu-jitsu, in my opinion, because as you're strategically being offensive, your opponent will be defensive the entire round. And you might have somebody who's better than you, and you happen to get them in this position, and now you're almost making them feel a lot worse than yourself because you're chaining so many submissions together, and it's not their fault. They're, they might still be better than you, but you're going from arm bar to triangle to the back to the wrist, and you're able to connect those, those submission chains. So that's what always helped my confidence too. I hope it helps you guys. Thanks to my good friend Ty. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Also, follow me on Instagram at abens239. Thanks so much, guys. Oh,